So in the last bunch of videos, we've been looking at what is called kinematics, which is if we have some object moving, we want to track the motion of this object with variables, whether it be x, y, or z, or r, or theta. So we want to track the position, we want to track the velocity, and we want to track the acceleration of this object. So this is what's known as kinematics. But in this section of dynamics, we're going to be looking at the kinetics of the motion of a particle. And all that means is we're going to start wondering, you know, what is causing this object to move? What is giving it acceleration? What is giving it velocity? So that is to say, we're going to start looking at the forces that cause the motions we've been looking at. And we use Newton's second law to do this. You add up all of the external forces acting on your particle, and that is equal to the mass of that particle times its acceleration. So let's say we were tracking this object moving with x, y, and z coordinates. We would be able to find out the x component of acceleration, the y component of acceleration, and the z. And what we would do is we would add up all the forces in the x and equate that to the mass times the acceleration in the x. And when we, would, we would do this for the y and the z as well. So really this whole Newton's second law, kinetics of a particle concept, isn't too much new stuff. We're still going to do all the work we've done in the last videos with figuring out the velocity and the acceleration and the position. Just now, we'll add an extra step. We'll want to add up the forces in the x, add up the forces in the y, and add up the forces acting in the z. So this is how we would do it if we were analyzing the motion of a particle using a rectilinear coordinates, x, y, and z coordinates. But as we've learned, we can analyze the motion of a particle using different coordinate systems. For instance, we have the, the normal tangential coordinate system. If our particle was here, it would have some normal acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle that the object's on at the moment. And of course, we would have some tangential acceleration. So what we would do here is we would add up the forces in the tangential direction and equate that to the mass times the acceleration in the tangential direction. And we would do the same thing for the forces acting in the normal direction. And the other coordinate system we looked at was the radial transverse coordinate system. So if we had some you know, satellite here, this would be the R, and we would have some theta, so this is also known as polar coordinates. But our object here would have some radial acceleration and some transverse acceleration. And we do the exact same thing. Some of the forces in the transverse direction is equal to the mass times the transverse acceleration and some of the forces in the radial direction is equal to the mass times the radial acceleration. So a big part of doing these kinetics problems is just making sure you're good with the kinematics that we've already done. Can you determine the transverse velocity and transverse acceleration? Can you determine the radial velocity and the 
radial acceleration. All those kinematics equations are going to be needed so we can determine the forces that are necessary to create these accelerations and these motions. And the other side is that, yeah, now that we're talking about forces, you want to, you want to make sure you're remembering your physics class, the different forces we have. The weight is the mass times the gravitational constant, 9.81 on Earth. You also have friction, that's static and kinetic friction. You have springs, that's F is equal to K times delta X, or sometimes we sort of shorten that, K times X. Be careful you're choosing the right one. You have normal forces. When two surfaces are pushing on each other, and you have ropes, you have tensions. So just make sure you're familiar with the details of all the different types of forces we can see here. Some of them are pretty straightforward, like weight. Weight, gravity, it's always acting towards the center of the Earth. But some of them, like friction and spring force, it can be more complicated. So in the next couple of videos, we'll just do some problems. I think that's the best way to do this. We'll do a couple problems for the rectilinear system, the radial and transverse system, sometimes known as the cylindrical coordinate system, and the normal tangential coordinate system. So I hope this intro made sense. Please post any questions if you have them, and I'll see you in the next couple of videos.